In the headlines, payments for BICO policyholders remain in limbo as ECCB governor considers legal options. Interventions by NGO Coalition for the Protection of Children and Youth attracts the British High Commission and a $1.6 million contract signed for apartments to house fire-stricken Silver Lake families. I am Kenny Williams with the Channel 5 News. I'll be back with the details after this. First up, 67 local policyholders of the bankrupt BICO still await outstanding payments from Trinidad to be paid into the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. Idonajan Baptist explains. Branches of the failed British American insurance company BICO in the Eastern Caribbean Central Union have been under judicial management since 2009 after BICO and Clico's parent company, CL Financial of Trinidad, crashed leaving investors, pensioners, and policyholders in financial streets. BICO collapsed in part because of an unsuccessful series of investments in Florida real estate. Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Timothy Antoine, said millions of dollars have been paid out to local BICO policyholders. However, some $2 million are still being owed. In Dominica, the next slide, we actually have been able to pay out around uh, $10 million to about 600 policyholders, um, which is um, good. Um, but we still have about 67 policyholders owed about $2 million. And the reason why we have not been able to do that is because we are still waiting on the funds from Trinidad. And so unfortunately, Trinidad has not been able to keep its promise. And that has uh, affected our ability to deliver on our commitment to deal with those policyholders. The government of Trinidad had agreed to pay affected BICO policyholders in the OECS 100 million US dollars since Trinidad had taken over the assets of BICO. Antoine has not ruled out exploring legal options to resolve the issue. Well, we've been able to pay about 80% of all the policyholders so far, uh, many of which are, were small policyholders with holdings of less than $30,000 or up to $30,000. We've made progress there. We see in the ECCU, we paid out over $108 million to just under 8,000 policyholders. So we've made good progress, but there are still people who are unpaid. So we continue to follow up with Trinidad, which is the next slide. And um, we also, of course, have to keep all our legal options open at this point in time. More than 20,000 persons throughout the Eastern Caribbean who held traditional life insurance policies issued by BICO were impacted. As it relates to Clico's situation, Antoine said this is still with the courts in Barbados. Last year, the BICO judicial manager for Dominica, along with the London-based KPMG Insurance Solutions Company, held a meeting with policyholders locally to explain what has gone on over the last five years in the court's supervised recovery plan. A plan of arrangement legislation was also passed in Parliament to facilitate recovering monies lost from both collapsed insurance companies. Edo Najan Baptist, Channel 5 News. The work of the NGO Coalition for the Protection of Children and Youth has reached the British High Commission. As a result, a representative of the British High Commission Barbados office met with members of the organization on Tuesday as part of a visit here to expand his knowledge of the country. Edward Munn told Channel 5 News the UK government is very interested in tackling sexual-based violence. It's an issue that I used to work on in my previous job in London. So when I was planning this trip, I spoke to Tina, and I made contact here, and she asked if I would be willing to come here and speak at today's event. And uh, this is something that I'm very passionate about, I used to work on. Um, it's a very important issue, but I know that um, tackling gender-based violence is also an issue that's still very important for the UK uh, and the UK government. So we have a Prime Minister's special representative on tackling sexual and gender-based violence, uh, Baroness Annalé. Uh, who was out in the region quite recently um, and I know that the UK has been providing sort of training to the local police here in Dominica and some sort of rape detection kits uh, which I'm very pleased to hear about um, and so yeah it's just something I'm here to to help support as much as I can. While here Mon attended the NGO Coalition's Stamp Out Gender Violence Campaign Town Hall meeting in Casa Bruce. 
I'm here to try and share my knowledge and provide as much assistance as I possibly can. So I'm, I'm the head of the political team, so I look after UK relationships with seven countries across the, uh, the Eastern Caribbean region. Um, but I also lead on sort of the communication side as well. So it's about promoting what the UK is doing uh, in the region uh, through our sort of aid companies as well. Uh, this, is, this is my first trip. I mean, uh, I'm happy to meet them again in the future, uh, but we'll see how it goes. More top stories. A request for additional little wardens when fulfilled will arm the Roseau City Council to better clean up Roseau. Mayor of Roseau, Her Worship Iron John, told Channel 5 News recently the current number of little wardens assigned to the council is just not enough to serve the entire Roseau district. Um, we also had... Um Two persons that were going around, you know, to, to make sure that um, the, the, the city that people, you know, do not litter. We had the litter wardens, two litter wardens, but to date we only have one and we have already um, a, a applied to government to get at least two more litter wardens because Rosa is a very wide city. You know, it extends from Livia Canary to, to Ravin Cork. And one little warden is just impossible to do what you know he or she is expected to do. So we have already asked government for two more little wardens. So we'll have one in the north, one in the south, and one central Roseau. She says she is encouraged by a Roseau cleanup project launched last February in partnership with Ministry of Tourism. That Roseau is looking much cleaner than it used to be, you know. And that doesn't mean that some persons will still maliciously litter and throw some things in the gutter, in the drains and what have you, you know, but um, by far, Roseau is a much, much cleaner area, you know, based on the program with City Council and the, the Ministry of, of Tourism. And we thank them a lot for coming on board to assist us because it is getting very difficult, you know, uh, in the absence of cash to do what is expected of us to do in the city. On the issue of people indiscriminately urinating in the public, John believes the law should impose penalties like is done in the U.S. Around carnival time, mm -hmm. every year we put public conveniences in the city mm -hmm. and we put it in areas where it is easily accessed. And we are asking that person to pay a dollar to use the convenience. And that doesn't mean if they do not have a dollar that they will not be permitted to use it. But yet, they will go behind the public convenience. You know, it is right there. They'll go behind it, but they will find money to buy alcohol, to do other things, mm -hmm. but they find it difficult to pay just one dollar. So right now, I think government has to put measures in place where the persons can, can charge them. You know, when they are found doing that, that they, they can be charged. Mm -hmm. You know, so you just, need, you just need to charge one or two persons and the news will go around, you know, that you're not supposed to do it. The government has promised an improved living experience to residents of Silver Lake affected by the Boxing Day 2016 fire. On Tuesday, government promised the community an improved living experience on the occasion of the groundbreaking and contract signing for the commencement of work on Phase 3 of the Silver Lake Apartment Complex. It is expected to feature 12 dwelling units. The new building will be disposed over three floors. The Phase 3 Apartment Complex will see the construction of six one-bedroom units on the ground floor. So the building will be constructed essentially right where we are now, and there will be six one-bedroom units on the ground floor. Between phase two and phase three, there will be a roadway some 16 or so feet wide. Therefore, it allows us to have entry to three units on the northern side and three units on the southern side on the ground floor. And at the middle floor level, there will be three two-bedroom units, as well as the top floor, there will be three two-bedroom units. And if our math mathematics serves us well, I think that equates to a total of 12 units in the Silver Lake apartment project phase three. Meantime, Social Services Minister Catherine Daniel outlined support provided to affected families. To date, support approved for the Silver Lake families has been as follows. 
$20,000 in immediate financial assistance. This sum has been disbursed to the families. A maximum of $48,000 for rental assistance for three months initially. To date, $6,200 has been expended for January. We still have one or two people in the shelter and some people are living with friends and family. So that's why the amount of 6000 An amount of 14000 for monthly allowance for three months. To date, 4700 has been expended for January 2017. And I met some people yesterday who were asking about this allowance. Some have received paid. And you should check with your bank, those of you who have bank accounts, or check with the social security. This money has been allocated and it's there ready for you to receive that amount. So those of you who have not received enough as of yesterday, some did not. So by the end of the week, check. It should be at your different bank um, facilities. A total of $26,310.54 for basic furnishings for 10 residents. And this includes refrigerators, stoves, beds, and mattresses, and dining sets. Sometimes people say, you know, these people hadn't got those things. But as a caring government, our fundamental business is to ensure that the lives of our citizens and residents are lived in dignity and pride. Further support has been provided in various other areas, such as facilitating connections of utilities at various premises and provision of regular food supplies to the Silver Lake victims in shelters and other accommodation. The project's contractor is Kelvin Henderson of AK Henderson Construction Limited. You are watching Channel 5 News, much more when we return. Welcome back. Dominica State College students are being encouraged to consider the agriculture industry as a potential avenue to generate their own income. Agriculture Minister Johnson Drago has advised the DSE students that his administration has made opportunities available for that to happen. We in the ministry will continue to engage Dominica State College in efforts to provide wrong needed graduates in agriculture for the sector. And I dare say to the students of the Dominica State College, some of you certainly would want to make some money before you move on to put the studies. Agriculture is one of the fast ways you can make some money out of. With government's facility of $10 million at Aid Bank, you can put a proposal together, come to the Ministry of Education, we will assist you, whether it's through the livestock unit, whether it's in fishing, whatever you want to do, and we will assist you to go into agriculture as a business, as a first step in assisting you in reaching your goal in, it, in, it, in your education. Meantime, National Authorizing Officer Carleen Roberts says her office is seeking to stimulate interest in agriculture through the Banana Accompany Measures Program. One of the key result areas of the BAM is capacity building in the agricultural sector, starting at an early age. Therefore, BAM has contributed to improving agricultural programs in order to enhance the subject area and make it more attractive as a viable career at various levels. For instance, at the Dominica State College, BAM has provided tuition for five students studying agriculture at the associate degree level, as well as supplied much needed agricultural research material for the institution's library. We also upgraded the college's farm. Later this month, the college's agro-processing program will also benefit from essential equipment and supplies. 
Next up, parents are being encouraged to develop a more enabling environment in order to better help children report cases of child abuse. The call came from local artist Mikhail Henderson Delsol when she addressed the 8th Phenomenal Caribbean Women's Symposium over the weekend. Henderson Delsol had recounted her own experience of abuse and urged parents to dialogue with their children. The it occurred to me that as parents, we sometimes create an environment where our children are afraid to talk to us about something like this. As much as I love my parents and I knew they loved me back, I could not bring myself to tell them about this incident. This just was not something we talked about. I guess they thought that the potential for something like this to happen was so slim that it did not require an open conversation about it, and that's the mistake we very often make. Mm -hmm. We seem to think that it, it won't happen to us, it can't happen to us, not my child. I don't blame them, but from this example, I see room for improvement in my own parenting. We have to create an enabling environment for our children to communicate with us. We should not be afraid to share things like this with the people who love them the most. The song star also gave high praise to the Leve Dominique campaign and urged others to speak out on their experience in order to give courage to those who went through similar or worse situations. Leve Dominique, a movement spearheaded by Del Roy Williams and Khadija Moore, inspired by the Life and Legends movement on the Barbados, sparked something in me. I realized that the shame I felt was common to many people who had undergone similar and much worse abuses. It was time to speak up. I gathered up my courage and told my story publicly for the first time. Thank you, Dara and Khadija, for helping me arrive at this level of understanding. And Caribbean women are being challenged to show their phenomenal virtues in times of adversity. Parliament of the Portsmouth constituency made the call when addressing the 8th Phenomenal Caribbean Women's Symposium organized by VF Inc. held at the Cabrits in Portsmouth over the weekend. This activity, though it comes across as very simple, is very deep. And that's why I always want to lend my support to this activity because now more than ever, we need this phenomenal women's symposium. With everything that's happening, not only in Dominica, in the Caribbean, in the region, and around the world, we need women to stand up and be counted and to shine. And women from all walks of life, because you are an important part of our purpose. Douglas reminded the Caribbean women to continue working together to develop the entire Caribbean region, not just their individual countries. From stage one, from day one, from the raising of our children who will become productive citizens to continue the developmental process to run in our homes. And you are in all walks of life today. And I just want to congratulate you and salute you all for the phenomenal work that you continue to do in every aspect of our life. Because obviously, we know that men couldn't do it alone. It was God's divine purpose that we do it together. We work together, we toil together, we struggle together, we achieve together. The symposium was held under the theme, Whatever you conceive, you can achieve, because God has the power to deliver what He promises. That's news. Your sports highlights is next. First up in sports, reports out of ESPN Creek Info says that effective January 31, West Indies all-rounder Andre Russell had been banned for one year from cricket. The ban was issued by an independent anti-doping panel in Kingston for a whereabouts clause violation. A whereabouts violation occurs when an athlete fails to make his or her location known to local anti-doping agencies. Russell had missed filing his whereabouts on three separate occasions in 2015, which adds up to a failed drug test under World Anti-Doping Agency guidelines. The Jamaica Anti-Doping Commission brought charges against Russell in March last year for not filing his whereabouts in January 1, July 1, and July 25 in 2015. In related news, 
Trinidad and Tobago beat the West Indies Under-19 team by eight wickets in Tuesday's match of the 2017 Najiko Super 50 tournament. TNT won the toss and elected to field first. In their turn at the crease, the West Indies Under-19 scored 58 from 31 overs. Set 59 for victory, TNT equaled that target with the loss of two batsmen. Meantime, there were close wins for Guyana and Barbados in Monday's games. In the Guyana versus ICC Americas match, Guyana won by five runs via the Duckworth-Lewis method in a game reduced to 45 overs. Batting first, ICC Americas scored 220 for seven. Nitish Kumar piled on 66 and Tim Roy Allen 37. Runsford Beaton picked up four for 28. Set 208 to win, Guyana reached 212 for four in 43.3 overs. Leon Johnson had a game high of 78 while Assad Fudadin scored 54. In the Barbados versus Jamaica encounter, Barbados won by one wicket with 12 balls remaining. Jamaica first at the crease was bowled out for 190 in 45.3 overs. In reply, the Beijing team scored 191 for 9 in 48 overs. Shane Dorich added 40. In football, there are 11 matches scheduled this week in the National Leagues of the Dominica Football Association. According to the DFA's Public Relations Officer, Gerald George, RC Doctors will take on Exodus Football Club at Dublin in Wednesday's game of the Division I League at 6 p.m. In a doubleheader at Pori on the same day, we have a Ray Charles Point Michel against Police Sports Club at 5.30, followed by a clash of the Digicel Newtown Juvenile Academy Harlem United and ACS 711 Portersville Tarish United teams at 7.30. The action continues on Thursday also at Pori, where Andy Williams Spartans will come up against Gully Dream Team from 5.30 p.m. to be followed by St. Mary's Corporative Credit Union Delta United at 7.30 in the night. Over at Dublin, Boston Warner will take on Element Agency's LA Stars at 6 p.m. On Friday, Malta Carib Bath Estate FC will do battle with Trafalgar FC at Pori, while at Dublin it will be Haitian Angels versus MV Maxon Obamas. Both matches begin at 6 p.m. On Sunday, Exodus FC will go against East Central at Benjamins Park from 3 in the afternoon. Meantime, in the DFA Flow Premier League on Sunday, Petro Caribe Point Michel will take on Caribbean Cool Harlem United at Geneva from 3 p.m. At Benjamins Park, it will be a Bath Estate FC and a Northern Concrete and Steel Bombers encounter at 5 p.m. We move on to track and field where one athlete has booked an early spot on the Dominican squad ahead of the upcoming Carifta Games this year. 13-year-old Trenis Hamilton of Dominica Grammar School in a throw of 12.72 meters was the first track and field athlete to qualify for the Games so far. Hamilton was competing in the under-18 girls shot put event at the Dominica Amateur Athletics Association's first development meet of 2017. I didn't really realize I'd make it because I didn't I didn't know that was the that was the competition to determine if he was going character or not. I thought it was still I thought it was in the stadium until the independence beat or something. So but when I asked the Sir Godwin, he told me the qualifying mark was twelve point five zero. I went back and I I, I looked at my score and I saw I had a twelve point seven two but and then after I told him but sir, I make it. Nathan, he came back, he went back to um, check my soul. He said, well, you're the first person to um, make it. So. She says being able to represent Dominica at the Curve Games is a dream come true. Inside I was happy and thing I didn't know to express myself and thing. Because I wanted to I wanted to go carry it for a long while since I was in first form. Mainly my goal, I don't want to throw a 15. By the time you see the competition come up, if I can throw a 15 in, in training, then I can throw it in the competition. Sunday's development meet provided the platform to assess athlete performance ahead of regional and international competition. The 2017 Carifta Games are carded for April 15 to 17 in Curacao. Sports continues with this item where Dominica State College and Wesley High School female teams got wins in the Sports Division Secondary Schools Under-20 Volleyball Championships on Monday. DSC dominated their game against Portsmouth Secondary to win three sets to one. Final game scores 23-25, 25-15, 25-16, and 25-17. In another match, Wesley High School beat St. Martin Secondary three sets to two on home court. Game scores were 25-23, 27-29, 25-27, 25-14, and 10-15. 
over on the East Northeast Comprehensive won their respective male and female games against Isaiah Thomas Secondary in the boys category NECS 1-3-1. The scores were 25-21, 25-12, 22-25 and 25-15. In the female encounter against ITSS, NECS won 3-2. Final game scores 18-25, 25-23, 25-20, and 20-25. The games continue on Wednesday with DSC girls up against NECS at 2 to be followed by St. Mary's Academy versus defending male champions DSC at 3.30. Dominica Grammar School Hardcourt is the venue for those games. Finally, in Domino, Public Enemies destroyed one case from Dodan by 1,591 points in the most recent matches played in the island-wide White Oak Domino competition. According to reports from league coordinator Delvin Esprit, the final scores from that encounter were Enemies 4,008, one case 2,417. In the other match in Zone A, Tremors punished Pitit Savan, scores Tremors 4,004, Pitit Savan 2,566. Rockers 4,009, Fire Services 3,645, Dominic Bay Boys 4,011, Congaree Warriors 3,823, Heats 4,005, Penville 3,255. In Zone B, we had Wake Up Stars beating Dolphins from Scott's Head in their own backyard by 747 points. Final scores, Wake Up Stars 4,006, Dolphins 3,259, Stars from Anz de May 4,022, Strikers 2,280, Layu 4,001, Itasi Stars from Vekas 3,568, Non-Players from Casabruce 4,008, and Valiants from Mon Ratchet 3,849. That's all the sporting highlights for now. Join us next time. And now for the weather forecast. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am your presenter, Annie Corrette Joseph. The Atlantic High Pressure System was the dominant feature across the region today, generating a brisk trade wind flow. Low level clouds moving with this wind flow resulted in mostly cloudy skies across the Lesser Antilles today. Visible satellite imagery showed some low level clouds over Dominica during the course of the day, resulting in mostly cloudy skies. Radar imagery indicated some scattered showers over the region today. Conditions for tonight, partly cloudy to cloudy, with some scattered showers, some breezy conditions as well. Tomorrow, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers and some breezy conditions can also be expected. Sea conditions, moderate in open water, with waves up to 8 feet, small craft operators and sea bathers, you are advised to exercise some caution. Taking a look at the next three days, tomorrow Wednesday, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers, mainly during the afternoon. Weak and stable conditions can be expected over the area Wednesday into Thursday, resulting in mostly cloudy skies with some scattered showers on Thursday. On Friday, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with a few scattered showers. Some breezy conditions can also be expected on Wednesday. A gradual reduction in wind speeds can be expected as the week progresses. Across the region tomorrow, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers can be expected throughout. On the international scene, some snow can be expected in New York, partly cloudy skies in Miami, some rain in London, Paddy cloudy skies in Caracas and clear skies in Beijing. The sun will rise tomorrow at 6.35 a.m. and set at 6.04 p.m. For up-to-date information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and join us next time. Good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Payments for BICO policy holders remain in limbo as ECCB governor considers legal options. 
Interventions by NGO Coalition for the Protection of Children and Youth attracts the British High Commission and a $1.6 million contract signed for apartments to house fire-stricken Silver Lake families. Feel free to contact us at news at marvin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Kenny Williams. Thanks for watching. Join us tomorrow.